step away from the machine now. We've been hearing about security robots for decades now, but they're finally a reality. This is the Night Scope, and it roves around public and private places searching for intruders. We obviously had a lot of questions about it, though. Is it safe around people? Are there privacy concerns? And will it replace human guards? Chances are you haven't heard of Nightscope, a security startup founded way back in 2013. But it won't be long before you come face to face with one of its creations. They're 400 pound, six foot tall autonomous security robots that rove parking lot aisles, the hallways of office campuses, sports stadium foyers, and shopping malls on the prowl for suspicious activity. There's only 700 plus thousand sworn women and men protecting our streets, and that's at the federal, state, and local level. Uh, the math doesn't pencil, you can't do that. So what's the actual problem? The actual problem is that we don't have actionable intelligence, and the only way to gain actionable intelligence is through eyes and ears. Stacy Stevens, a former police officer who co-founded the company in 2013 after the tragedy at Sandy Hook Elementary School, says Nightscope's robots don't replace human law enforcement, but rather these so-called fully autonomous security data machines are meant to fill in the blind spots. The humans still have to make the critical uh, thinking decisions. They're the ones who have to be, to be there to decide what to do and how to do it. We provide the information, we provide the hardware, the, the, uh, the sensors and the information that comes out of that through our software, but the humans are a key element of that. The secret sauce is sensors. There are lots of them. Some specifically designed to keep the robots from accidentally running into people or overfeed in crowds. Each of our machines actually navigates through life coincidentally very similar to a human being. We have five senses that we use to go through each and every day of our lives. Uh, our robot has five sensors that it uses to navigate as well. Uh, the first one is a LiDAR, so if you look at the top of the machine, you see the little disc on top. We've got over 16 lasers, uh, 16 lasers in that. We have another uh, five lasers throughout the machine, and they're spinning around and recording a three-dimensional map every 20 milliseconds. So we're able to update a map every 20 milliseconds of our surroundings. Secondly, we have ultrasonic sensors. Uh, so we have uh, proximity sensors, similar to what's on the back bumper of your car. Uh, when something comes close, we're able to tell that, hey, something's come here, and I need to stop and not hit the object. Uh, third, we have GPS, triangulating off of the satellites up in the sky. Uh, fourth, we have wheel odometry, again, borrowing from automotive technology. We're calculating the distance that each wheel travels within that space. Uh, and then fourth, we have an inertial measurement unit, or IMU. The IMU is just like in your phone when you, when you tilt the phone. You can tell if it's accelerating or decelerating and so on. And if you combine all five of those together, now you have an incredibly accurate depiction of what does my space look like, where am I in that space, what is around me, obstacle-wise, and how do I navigate through it. The robot sends all of the data it's collecting to the cloud, and Nightscope stores that data for as long as clients wish, in some cases up to 15 years. The robots, which come in two models, one for indoor use and one for outdoor use, are available on a subscription basis. Nightscope's plans start at about $7 an hour for 24-7 surveillance, which amounts to about $62,000 annually, and include monthly software updates, maintenance, and remote assistance from the company's more than 2,000 technicians. Nightscope sees potential for its robots just about everywhere. Among those already using them are Microsoft, the Sacramento Kings, and NBC Universal. In total, Nightscope plans to roll out these security bots to 16 cities across five states by the end of the year.